Isn't she wonderful? <laughs> Welcome to the Interdependence Day offering of Interfaith Interconnectedness Sound Meditation, sponsored by the Chaplaincy Institute and the Alumni Community. I'll begin and end with a poem by Rumi called Isn't That Something? I like when the music happens like this. Something in his eye grabs hold of a tambourine in me, and I turn, and I lift a violin in someone else, and they turn, and this turning continues. It has reached you now. Isn't that something? <laughs> Spirit is present for you here because you are present. When we remember and dwell, live, touch, work from our center, we are not exhausted by our service to others, but more likely to be enriched by it. When we are at home in our center, we are both sovereign and connected to something greater. It's an honor to be with you here today with my fellow Chiefsters. Thank you for joining us on this Independence Day giving us a bit of your holiday. 
Thank you. I offer up the celebratory meditation practice on this anniversary day of our deliverance from the tyranny of an overlord. And I also find myself the overlord these days, <laughs> my inner overlord, <laughs> when I forget who I am. And as chaplain, as a chaplain, I know better, but in my humanness, I forget. But luckily, we are interconnected. I have books and friends and a community and traditions that support me. In remembering, we need each other to do this work, to remind ourselves that we, what we know in our hearts. This is the reason not, that we do not do this work alone, but practice together in interdependence, interfaith, and interconnectedness. With me today is the good company of a couple of Jewish people, Hindu, a Buddhist, a Christian, a Christian, Christian mystic or two, and a little bit from my caregiving book, uh, and a Muslim. It's truly interfaith. All their wisdom, though, is about being centered and sovereign, interconnected, yet independent, yet expanded, more than who we really are. Carrie will lead us in a little check-in. I'm glad that we have um, have you here. Um, I'll talk about five minutes and give you some tasty things to consider. And then I will mostly get out of the way and, and uh, let sound and you do the meditation. I think that's it. Welcome, everyone. I'm, I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're all here. Um, I do want to light a candle to remind us that spirit is here and spirit is with us, that spirit flows through our community, uniting us as one. And then a few words from the Chi community commitment. We, the Chi community, are a conscious, committed, and always evolving interfaith community. We devote ourselves to serving people through the seasons of life as they seek to fulfill their highest destinies on earth. All are welcome and all make us who we are. So since we're a, a small group and it's a holiday weekend, we're going to take just a few moments to kind of do a check-in instead of breakouts today. So um, I'm going to pause the recording and I will ask that we ground our question, our opening check-in in, in um, the curious question, have you ever used sound in meditation? Today we have with us Reverend Elizabeth Hager. Elizabeth is a hospice chaplain and Chi alumna. She's an author and devoted to the Chi community. She's with us today to offer the service Interdependence Day, offering of interfaith interconnectedness, sound meditation, and wise words. Let's just breathe. Let's breathe into the spaces that are empty and be grateful for them and the space that's full and be grateful for that. Sound to me is about centering, the sounds of nature, which is my church really, are always playing in the background of my sound meditations because we rarely get silence. And I don't wanna need silence. I wanna be able to drop down to the silence under the sound or under the note or even under the music. Perhaps that place that, that Sufi place that uh, Maki was talking about. There's a Nigerian word for it that is the, that is the, the peaceful place under the turbulence of the surface water. That's, that's, that's where that's where I point the sound when I do a sound meditation. First, I'm going to introduce my instruments, just so, because you can't really see them here. <clears throat> this is a um, hum drum, or a tone drum, a metal drum, created by um, oh, Vision Hack Music. Yeah. Sound for me 
as a tool. I send it to the areas in my body that need something. And if you're not used to using it, you are sovereign here. This is your practice. But adding sound as opposed to music, sound is maybe a little more neutral. Music is, it's, it has a story to it. Sound might be directed in a maybe a little more neutral. But it's not just the sound of sea. Space between the sound. That is the beauty. That is the beauty. So the practice, I think, is to be curious about what, <clears throat> how sound can enhance your own meditation. I also have some, um, some chimes from the Pyrenees mountains. And I have a beautiful, deep, resonant Indian bell. So those are the tools. And you're the conductor. It's your meditation. It's up to you how you use them, but the practice, I think, for me is to be curious. It's just to be curious about what is working for you. I'm going to talk for about five minutes and give you some sustenance about centering and about an interfaith interconnectedness and how being at our still point from many faith traditions helps us do our work because it doesn't exhaust us, it actually enlivens us when we stay in our center. The Sanskrit word for prayer, its root means judging oneself to be wondrously made. How about that? Just to remember that we are wondrously made in prayer. The practice of being a chaplain for me is remembering that wholeness in me and in all others. The Buddhist teacher Pema Chodron urges us to hold on to a bigger perspective. And she references a story about circles from many faith traditions. They connote sacred space. She says to imagine a circle drawn around us where we stand at the center. No matter what we do, no matter where we go, we are always in that sacred space. And this is something from a book, my book about caregiving. It's called ETAC Compass. And ETAC is the system of Micronesian navigation, which uses no instruments in a mapless ocean to move from island to island. Um, you know, th these navigators use swells and ocean currents and birds like other navigators. But the interesting thing about a Palau master, which is a master navigator, is that he imagines, he believes that the canoe is stationary and the oceans are moving around him. He is the still point of it all. He is as sure that, he, that this is true as Westerners are that the canoe is moving. So what is this? Is this delusional, self-centered, narcissistic? It has been working for navigation for them for a millennium. I want to find that still point in me, in everything I do, that midpoint that connects me to the earth, to my mind and heart and gut in such a way that I am rooted to the center of the earth. There's a rabbinical story 
also very similar to this balance. It's, uh, it's the two pocket story. Every person has two pockets, and there's a note in each pocket. And the one pocket, if you're feeling down and lonely and a little, a little depressed, you pull the note out of your right pocket, and it says, the universe was created for me. And if you're feeling a little arrogant, full of yourself, you, pull, you put your hand into the left pocket and you pull it out and you say, it says, I am nothing but dust and um, ashes. Teilhard de Chardin, a Catholic theologian, is always speaking about how we are spiritual beings having a human experience. He speaks to both of those. But the Christian mystic, um, Eric Butterworth, has one of my favorite sayings about this, is that this, this center point, this, this spirit within us, he says that spirit is in us not like a raisin in, is in a bun. Spirit is within us like an ocean is in a wave. It gets to that higher perspective, that presence here. He says uh, and suggests that we daily or moment to moment resign our master of the universe status and uh, let God be God. Let spirit be spirit in us. But perhaps the final story that is most relevant is from Dr. Rachel Naomi Raymond, which means a lot to me. She is a, um, a doctor and a storyteller, and she talks about how to being of service in healthcare at its best is a relationship of wholeness between peers. When we slip out of our center, we slip into fixing or even helping. We're off center. We lose um, that center and the power and dynamics move from dignity to something less helpful. And most importantly, it overtaxes us. I, I'm not, and, and I'm not doing much to help the other person. It's about serving the other person, serving from a place of mutuality and wholeness. So I dedicate our practice today of sound and breath and, and uh, gratitude to dwelling in and from that place at our center so that we will not be exhausted by our service to, each, to others, but more likely to be enriched by it. Because burnout is not a badge of honor. Let go. Let God be God in you. And we begin. So let's get comfortable. Take a breath of gratitude. Breathe in gratitude through the heart. Breathe it in and exhale. Whatever's up for you today, breathe gratitude in through the heart. Breathe it in. And exhale all that is not yours to do at this moment. I like when music happens like this. Something in his eye grabs a hold of a tambourine in me, and I turn, and I lift a violin in someone else, and they turn. And this turning continues. It has reached you now. Isn't that something? Drop down to your center.
Job done. <coughs> you arrived. sound to remind you. Isn't that something? And if you find yourself drifting, let the sound journey back to center with you, making none of it wrong.
give me a little space. This place where we are spiritually reset. This place of abundance. This place of resilience. This place of peace where we drop the mind. Remember this place where we are the gardener of self lives. Remember this place. I like when the music happens like this. Something in your eye grabs a hold of a tambourine in me, and I turn and lift a violin to someone else, and they in turn, and this turning continues. It has reached us all now. Isn't that something? Thank you so much. Thank you for joining me. Beloved friends, as we leave this time and this blessed holy space together tonight, let's remember to let go and let God be God. That we don't need to help, we just need to be of service. And may we invite and remember that the divine is in us, moving within us, like the ocean moves in a wave. So much love to you, each one of you. May all be well as you go forward. I'll play some music to take us out. Please prepare me to be a sanctuary pure and holy tried and true with thanksgiving i'll be a living sanctuary for you please prepare me to be a sanctuary pure and holy tried and true with thanksgiving i'll be a Sanctuary for you. Please prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving. Be a living sanctuary for you. Please prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true.
be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. Thank you, everyone. Pure and holy. Thank you, Carrie. Lovely to see your faces. Carrie, everybody. Thank you so much, Reverend Elizabeth. That was beautiful. Stunning. Thank you, Carrie.